going on YouTube? I hope you all like that intro. That was a little homage to the guy I'm reviewing today, and that is David De Las Morenas, or as everyone knows him as, How To Beast. And more importantly, why well, this actually could be the end of his YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Okay, so where do I start? Now, I've been watching um, How To Beast since probably about early 2019. So I've done hours and hours of extensive research, watched multiple, multiple videos of this guy. And what can I say? When I first started watching him, you know, his videos used to be great, the information used to be fantastic. But since then, there's been that sort of decline. So first of all, I didn't actually notice this. I was actually watching one of the videos of my brother and he kept on saying, why is this guy eating all this absolute rubbish? Like the guy was literally eating McDonald's. Next video, he was eating Chick-fil-A. Next video, he was at Dunkin' Donuts. Next video, he was at Krispy Kremes. Then he's obviously going to all these taco vans as well. And my brother's like, how does he keep his shape while giving diet advice while eating this rubbish? Now, as you can see, you know, every single video is somewhere, is absolutely somewhere different. You know, he's either like having burgers, he's having donuts. And more importantly, as you can see, he absolutely loves his tacos, tacos, and even more absolute tacos. So basically he's the king of the tacos. Are they healthy? They're not the healthiest you can eat, but that's why that's where it comes from basically. So, so you can imagine why he has to green this green nutritious drink every morning, because let's face it, it's probably the only place he's getting his nutrients from. So you, you can't really blame him for that. Now secondly, now I don't know all you guys out there, but this this definitely applied to me. When you was in a long-term relationship for it could be for a number of years and you suddenly became single for whatever reason and you went back to dating. Dating game absolutely changed from when you used to date, right? So I can remember when I was single, I used to have like a rhythm of flow of how to sort of meet girls online, how to match with them, how to text them, how to arrange first dates, what to do on a first date. Then you get into a relationship for one, two years and that literally goes out the window. So when you become single again and you get back into a dating game, it's all changed. Like the way you used to message girls has changed. There's now how to meet girls, how they like to be approached, what to do in first dates. It completely changes like you're starting from afresh. So the fact is David has now been in the relationship for over three years, yet he's still giving dating advice to single guys. Is he actually qualified to give dating advice now? Has the game changed from when he used to date? I think it has. So for me, his dating advice is almost irrelevant now because things have changed so much, especially what there was three years ago. So I'm sorry, David, but your dating advice is a little bit out of date, mate. You're gonna have to really, you know, cut out your videos and it's not really worthy, you know, of content to be, you know, put out there. Now, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna just judge from my opinion. Here's some clips of him giving some, you know, recent dating advice to some people, you know, and make your conclusion. So let's take flaking, for example. And you have to define your own blueprint. So this is my blueprint. I had a rule for myself, if a girl flakes, but, you know, she shows a genuine interest to meet up again, she says, oh, sorry, something came up, but, but are you free Sunday or Monday? I would give her the benefit of the doubt and I'd give her one more chance. But if the girl just kind of vaguely flaked and said, oh, I'm busy tomorrow, sorry, I can't make it, immediately I would stop, te stop texting the girl. It's not a decision. The decision was already made because of my blueprint. Now, if a girl gave an innocent reason the first time, but then she flaked again a second time, no matter how good the reason was, I'm done, I'm not replying. The blueprint was created, I'm sticking to the blueprint, the concept of sexual tension. You, you meet a girl, you match with her, you guys are messaging to meet up, there's this excitement, you guys both go to the meeting place, you're talking, there's this crazy sexual tension that's building, and as soon as you kiss a girl, the tension breaks, the tension dies down. You lose that excitement. There's no like mysterious or that like romance anymore because you kind of already did it in the bar. Yeah, it's not like consciously the girl is processing these things, but when she goes home, she's just not going to feel as strongly like she wants to see you again. And it's probably going to feel the same way to you, to be honest. Now, the other girl, you got back, you guys were sitting on the sofa having some wine. Presumably, you hadn't kissed her yet, and that's that's what you want to do. You want to wait kind of till you're back in a place where a hookup can happen because now the sexual tension, the whole house is shaking with the tension, bro. And at that point, when you go for the kiss that's when you're gonna have the best chance to escalate things to the next level because there's all this built up excitement another thing is David's clickbait now I don't know if you've seen his thumbnails for all his videos it's like oh my god this has happened with his head in his hands oh this is you know what am I going to do next you know with a massive arrow pointing oh my god I messed this up and you think, oh my god, something unbelievably dramatic happened, then what you find out is he just scraped his Tesla on his garage wall, or, you know, he, you know, he forgot to charge his car, or 
you've got to put light on. That's about that's about as dramatic as it gets. I understand the need for you know for click you know to get people to click on your thumbnails and stuff, but he's coming a theme now over his last probably six months or so. It's clickbait after clickbait after clickbait. And does everyone click? Yes, because it's still getting the numbers. And am I clicking? Yes, but it's like something exciting really happened. Please, David, something really exciting. You know, just give something back to your viewers. Probably now another point, and this is a little bit personal, and you know. This isn't just from my view, but this is also a view shared by many other YouTubers, and more importantly, Greg Doucette, of how your hair can affect how many views you've got, and how good looking you are, corresponds, you know, to more viewers, basically. As you can see from this chart, David, in this recent video, used to have, you know, quite decent hair, you know, had a little bit of curls going on, a little bit of style, then all of a sudden he's shaved that off. Is this an effect in his views? Well, to be honest, yes. So, since he actually shaved his hair off, his average number of views has gone down by only a small number, but it still has gone down. He's not getting over 100,000 consistent views as he was before. As you can see for myself, you know, I've got, you know, I've got a full head of hair and a good looking guy, so my views should be, you know, rocking up, which are not. So that, that's just a problem with YouTube's algorithm in regards to my channel, so just ignore that. So it can't be all bad, right? To be honest, I'm an absolutely huge fan of yours, David. You know, I've been watching you since early 2019. You know, some of your advice has really, really helped. And what I love about the channel, you know, to give it its fair review, is that the online message of, you know, having that positive mindset, I absolutely love. It comes across in all your videos, you know, to have that positive mindset, to only worry about the things that you can control and don't worry about outside influences which you can have no control over whatsoever. You know, it's a fantastic message and it's, you know, it's a theme that runs through all your videos, you know, and it helped, it's helped me personally out throughout my life. I was going through, a couple of years ago, I was, you know, I was going through a bit of a hard time myself. Um, you know, I went through sort of a bad breakup and you know, watching your videos and the advice you were giving about working on yourself, having positivity, focusing on your goals, you know, worrying about the things you, you can control, it helped me out absolutely tenfold. And I can only thank you for that, David, because you know, the advice was absolutely brilliant. Your videos really helped me. So, you know, you definitely get a thumbs up for that. Now, what I also used to love about your videos, you know, it used to be your examples of how to tech skills, what to do on first dates and stuff like that. And not only was it fantastic advice, but it actually worked. I actually, you know, took your advice and you know, applied it to my dating life and stuff like that. And you know, it absolutely worked. My, you know, success rate went through the roof. You know, just applying those simple methods of, you know, being the sort of alpha guy, taking control. You know, not being the shy. And, you know, having a positive mindset. You know, really coming out of shell. And I absolutely love those videos. And any new guys who are coming to YouTube. You know, seeing those videos, it, the advice is absolutely fantastic. Your examples are brilliant and they actually do work. They actually work. So yeah, I can only give you, you know, again, another thumbs up for that as well. Worry your response time. If you're texting the girl and you're not doing anything, it's okay to reply back to her right away and have kind of like a rapid fire conversation. But let's say you're about to go to the gym or you're at work or you're just doing something. Then even if she messaged you and you see it, it's all right to leave that message on red for a few hours before you get back to her. Also, don't always reply to her. If she sends you a direct question, well, that's probably something that you should reply to. But if you guys have been texting back and forth for a little bit and then she sends you something like this, well, that could be an opportunity to put the phone down and just get back to her one day or two days later because that's gonna drive her I don't know if anyone's actually seen his videos, but this guy literally has the best edits on YouTube. His filming, his edits, his drone shots, his, his just scene shots, absolutely unbelievable. Probably the best I've personally seen on YouTube. Now, as you can see from this clip here, the effort that went into basically putting the camera down at the top of this car park, driving all the way back down to drive all the way back up just to take some pre-workout and then go to the gym, it's just the effort involved, you know, really pays off in your videos and you can tell the hard work that goes into it and it probably what makes your videos so fantastic so really really keep so yeah so keep on doing that because you know they're absolutely joy to watch another thing i don't know how the state of texas in america hasn't hired you you know to be in charge of their tourist board because it's made me want to visit austin or houston in texas you know the city looks fantastic you know the skyline the scenery you know i really want to visit there so if youtube doesn't work out for you i'm sure you're going to get a job you know on the tourist board for Texas because yeah you, you you advertise and promote it so well and your shots are fantastic so yeah let's face it a lot of people are watching this because they're looking for some information 
they're basically watching it because they're watching it for for you it's your personality such a likable guy to watch you know everyone wants to know about how you're getting on with your life what's going on with Julia you know where you're moving to next how your businesses are going how's your workout plans going how your goals going they watch the channel because they want to watch you not so much for the information and you know especially for me you know I love tuning in every you know Monday and Thursday to see what you're up to, to see what sort of dilemmas you've got you know see where you're going to go eat you know I absolutely love that and I think that for the majority of people that's why they're going to watch basically so it's 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 great to watch the videos are a pleasure you know I'm never going to stop watching for me you, you are probably the best YouTube channel out there so I've got to give you credit for that you're probably one of the first YouTube channels I personally subscribe to and the reason why I started my own YouTube you know and having a go at this is because of you it is your videos the way you present it the way you know you've, you've evolved from your first video you know all the way to to your videos now it's amazing to see you know it gives everyone you know that impetus to do something about their life to have that positive mindset you know to not just sit in your nine to five job or whatever it might be and you know be unhappy but to you know take that risk do what you love doing so yeah you are an inspiration personally to me and i'm sure to many of us so keep up the great work and i'm going to do a little homage at the end of this video just for you so if you like this video guys give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on so I release a new video every week and you don't want to miss. I'll see all of y'all in the next video. Stay beastly. Right, right.